Reloading. Hit. Hit. You okay? Are you okay?
Seriously though, what is that? Barbecue, man. You serious? That's the barbecue. Even though uh, the fire is a little bit too big. <laughs> So let me see, how much gas do I have left? Okay, that's not bad. Okay, so I have 2200 PSI, now I have 1900. So hey guys, this is Darren with Rogue Airsoft Studios. Thanks for watching my Polestar F2 gameplay in my VFC HK416. Uh, this is just a very basic build right now. I don't have anything particularly special done to this. Uh, all I have is a Amped Airsoft IGL, a HPA Speed Trigger, um, a very crappy inner barrel. Don't really know who made it. Uh, this is a secondhand 416. So it just came with whatever inner barrel that, that it came with. Uh, it's very silverish. And it comes to the tip of the uh, of the muzzle brake. I'm also using an Element hop up rubber and a Pro and hop up chamber. Uh, the Pro and hop up chamber, don't buy it. I only bought it because I'm experimenting with it. Um, I actually bought two Pro and hop up chambers, uh, one for my VFC Avalon and one for this, just to just to see what the hype is about. Because um, these these things are so popular, so wildly popular. They're always sold out every season. So I'm trying to figure out why it's so popular. Um, don't use it just because I'm using it. And the reason why I'm using an Element Hobble Rubber is because that is the only rubber hobble rubber that I have on hand. Originally, I ordered a PDI barrel as well as a Prometheus Hobble Rubber, but um, those parts didn't come in in time. So I just used whatever I had on hand. So that was the best I could do. With this hobble rubber, the range is absolutely terrible. So. I sort of knew that ahead of time. I knew this hobbit rubber was going to be very bad. So on that day, I was only using uh, 0 0.2 gram BBs, 1.2 to 1.3 joules, uh, 70 PSI. And the reason why I have it at that low power is because A, uh, it's a polar star. I don't want to overshoot people, but at the same time, I want to pull the trigger quickly. So that's the reason why I have it set at 1.2 to 1.3 uh, joules. And the reason why I'm using 0.2 gram BBs is very simple. Uh, the element hopper rubber, I already know it won't apply much hop. So since you're using 0.2 gram BBs, it's very easy to hop. So that's the reason why I'm using 0.2s. Um, it actually had a lot of range problems already with 0.2 gram BBs. This thing was only reaching about 30 to 40 meters. Uh, the BB would drop at roughly 45 meters. And that was really pushing it. Uh, all the shots that I made past 50 meters on that day was just purely by luck and I was holding over with a scope Right on most of the reason most of the day The only reason why I managed to hit anything at all was because I had the scope otherwise The accuracy of this thing was absolutely terrible uh, Someone has told me it could be a nozzle alignment issue. I've, I've did the nozzle alignment check It seems to be fine like the the inner barrel seems to be quite centered. You can see the red nozzle seems to be quite well aligned with the inner barrel so i'm not entirely sure uh, if that's a big deal or if there's something i need to think about so uh, i just decide to leave it uh, i checked uh, for the life of god i don't see anything out of the ordinary uh, i'm just going to blame that to the hopper rubber is because the element hopper rubber has never done anything good for me anyways that's the reason why i have it set of such a low power that's the reason why i'm using 0.2 gram bbs now the neat thing that i found the neat things that I learned with this so far is that for the FCU settings, uh, make sure that you leave a little bit more room uh, when you adjust your nozzle dwell and your return to battery delay. So if you're using very weird hop-up rubbers with very long feet lips, as long as you step up the settings a little bit for the nozzle dwell and the return to battery delay, that's it. Uh, it will feed. Uh, with the Element hop-up rubber, the feet lips are very weird. They actually go very near into the feed tube. If I drop a BB into the tube, it will pass the drop test. Um, but the second it passes the drop test, it's very, very stiff to go through the feed lips. Um, it, actually, it actually holds the, 
the BB. Um, even if it's off of the uh, uh, inner barrel, it'll actually hold the BB. Um, so I think the feet lips is a little bit long. It's actually the longest feet lip AG rubber that I have. Uh, the Maple Leaf rubber and the Element, they, they look very similar in the feet lips. So after I adjusted the nozzle dwell as well as the uh, return to battery delay up a little bit, um, it started feeding and it worked perfectly fine. Every single BB came out of this really, really quickly. Super, super awesome. Um, that was basically what saved the day. Um, if I don't have accuracy, I don't have range, I have rate of fire, super, super fun. I was basically swarming people with BBs on that day. I had so much fun. Um, this actually might be my my primary rifle for the next long while. No, I just, I've just had so much fun with this. Absolutely unbelievable. I do sort of regret building this in a 4 and 6 is because the 4 and 6 is very heavy. Um, I might build this in the carbine, uh, in the in the Avalon 14.5 uh, inch rifle one day, because I know that thing is pretty light. But for now, I have it on this, and uh, we'll just see how it goes. Um, I don't know what PSI I'll need to have this shoot 1.5 duels, is because since I'll be changing up my inner barrel and hop up rubber soon, and changing my BB weight soon, and changing my FCU setting soon. I will need to readjust my FCU settings and my PSI and everything. So I'll figure that out when the time comes. But otherwise, as you guys saw in the gameplay, basically with no tuning, you can, st you have, I had quite a lot of fun. I had a blast using this thing. Um, it's just that when you're shooting past 40 meters, you basically, you're relying on luck. Um, would it help if I used heavier BBs? I have no idea. Um, but either way, I'm using an element hopper rubber, so that situation doesn't really apply to you. If you're buying your F2, you're obviously going to buy your other, uh, the proper hopper rubber and inner barrel parts. Uh, mine just didn't come in time. But otherwise, had fun blasting people. Polar Star, yeah. I'm, I'm a big believer now. Um, originally, I was actually going to get a Reaper. It's because uh, the, the Wolverine Reaper, I saw one guy in Hong Kong using it, and he had it on a and an SR-25 or something like that, and it was really, really cool. But uh, I decided to get the F2, is because originally, uh, the first engine that I was looking at was the Polar Star Jack, and a lot of people figured out all the problems already. So I figured the F2 is is sort of the same, like a cylinder drop-in unit, except it has two solenoids and a forward bias nozzle. Uh, those and because I had those two things, I was super super curious about what those things will do. Uh, you have to admit, for all of you guys in Hong Kong, to some extent, this is a little bit interesting if you really think about it, because this is basically uh, a fusion engine has two solenoids. This is the exact same thing, except that it is now a cylinder drop-in unit. Right? I think I think that alone. That's the reason why. Well, that that got me all hyped up for it, so that's the reason why I jumped at it, right? That just that just tickles me in all the right places. Anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay. Um, please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe, and uh, check out my Facebook page. You can also uh, support the channel by checking out my store at RayTacticalSolutions.com. Uh, there's actually a sale going on, so if you guys want to get some stuff over there, check it out. And uh, peace, guys. Happy shooting.